All right, for this one, we're going to have really just direct straight to the point tutorial about how to rig a car in Mad Car. I know there's a lot of tutorials out there. Some of them have audio, some don't, some drag on. So I just want to go straight to the point. So Mad Car is a very simple, very useful plugin for making cars move. Simple as that. First thing we're going to do is create a Mad Car helper. This is kind of your bounding box of what items are located in it. Function, for example, if you want to have two cars animated, you want to have two helpers. Um, apart from one another, and then this will make sure that Madcar links each one independently and you could animate each one independently. All right, so first things first is we have the helper done. That's good. All right, we have to create a uh, chassis. So just go to chassis and rotate 180 degrees like so. Put it in the middle, make sure it's centered. And this one I'm just gonna kind of drag down here change the length and width of it to match kind of the shape of the car like so there we go that's good for me so I'm gonna hide this one for now all right so first things first I'm gonna hide my wheels and my brakes link the whole body of the car to the chassis helper there we go done first things done all right hide the body now we're gonna oh I had the brakes linked no big deal we're gonna do them anyways so hide that hide the brakes, show the wheels. All right, next thing is creating the wheels helper. So just create a wheel helper and just shift A, click it on the wheel as long as your pivot point's centered. That's what matters. Now just drag and drop. Now what I've noticed from personal experience is sometimes the, uh, the tires will hover past your object. So when I create these helpers, I actually make them go inside the wheel just a little bit. So that way I have full contact with the ground. All right, so that one's made. I'm going to do control V. This window comes up, copy, align it to the back wheel, control V, align it to the back wheel, turn on angle snap, rotate 180 degrees, copy again, align it. There we go. Now take each wheel, link it to that, link it to that, link it to that. Perfect. All right. Wheels are done. Now, last but not least is our brakes. So we're gonna go and create a suspension helper, align it. And then what we're gonna do is make it this kind. And then I'm going to offset the, uh, the wheel shift just a little bit. That's just my personal workflow. I'm gonna copy it to the front, make it a wishbone setup like so. And the reason why I offset it is I usually like to put it where the uh, kind of like the brake setup is, so somewhere like this. All right, there's that. So the reason why we created this, uh, the suspension is anytime you have, especially with CAD data, all the, the brake setup that does not have to rotate, so like the calipers, we want to link those items to the suspension, just like that. All right, so I'm going to copy that one. Actually, so for the rear, we're going to make it as an instance because it's identical, align it to the other tire. Same thing here as an instance. The only time you don't want to instance is the front and the back because they are separate. All right, so I am actually going to go and hide the uh, the wheel spin like so, and now just link the uh, the brake calipers to the suspension helpers since they don't rotate. They just go up and down with the wheel. All right, so the next thing is select the back side, make it a wheel drive, make it a handbrake, go to the front make it a steering gear so it turns left and right. Um, you could or could not make it a wheel drive. I have noticed making the front wheels wheel drive does help the car stick better and work better and steer faster. So I usually make them wheel drive regardless if it's four wheel drive or wheel wheel drive. Um, if you want like a burnout or a drifting type of situation, you can uncheck it so the rear has more power. But for the commercial stuff that I do, I usually just do front wheel drive as well. All right. so unhide everything and here's our ground plane so with mad car the way it works is oh you also need to create like let's say you want to start rigging it or animating it make a start position and we're going to align it to our chassis this way it sets the car up on the same height i'll just move it up forward a little bit and up so you'll see a snap go to your mad car helper first thing you want to do is go to surface select the surface and then you have to click update surface. It's very mandatory. Next, start position, like so. 
then what you're going to do is choose which input you want, keyboard, and then uh, that's about it. So then if you want to start playing with it, click update lock, click on the drive button, extend your keyframes so you can have a lot of fun with it like so, and press enter, and then W, S, A, D are your keys to move the car, and then space is handbrake. Now if your car's turning too slow, undo that, go to uh, the sensitivity, make it like 15, and now Oh, you always have to make sure you click update lock. And now as you can see, the car is working a lot better. It flips upside down due to the, uh, the momentum of the car. But in a nutshell, that's it. That's as simple as these mad car rigs are. Not much more to it. Same thing, if you add or modify the road, make sure you click update surface. Now let's say you wanted to have a car that has uh, been lowered and has negative camber. What you want to do there is I'm going to hide the body of the car. So the way for you to get away with negative camber in mad car, select your suspension helper. So let's say we're going to go to like negative three degrees, go to three degrees, negative two, two. There we go. And then if you want to lower the car right as well, just use this helper. And then we're just going to lower it like so. As you can see, now it's starting to visually break. But the wheels are always linked to the suspension. So once you click update, your ride height changes. And as well as that camber. As you can see, our wheels have an angle to them now. So now if you hit drive, you will actually animate and be able to drive your car with that camber. And it actually helps with stability of the car, which is kind of nice because realistically speaking, when you have negative camber, you have better traction on turns. So as you can see now when we're drifting, the car's not flipping upside down. So that's just something I always do as well as I always add negative camber. And it visually looks nice. Of course, not too excessive, like a three degree negative one. But like uh, my car in real life, it's lowered. It's not one of those camber cars where the suspension's all goofy it's made for performance and even then my rear's at negative one and a half to negative 1.75 i believe so that's it that's a quick mad car tutorial enjoy